Now, the next thing is very exciting. The Hampton School Board has moved this dish, this article forward, recommended by unanimously. The Hampton Academy Building Committee has moved it to us yes. unanimously. Yes. So I would move forward the uh, Hampton Academy Middle School project for $25 million to $950,000 recommended by the budget committee. I'll second that. Seconded by Mr. LeBranch. All right, it's all yours, Nathan. So, let me start. Okay. Yeah, let, let me start. Uh, I'm going to jump right into it. I think that, you know, there's, why do we need to do this? And I think we had several discussions already tonight uh -huh. about why this yep. needs to be done. But let me go through about why this is being proposed, and there'll be some uh, some schematics up there that I can go over with you. But uh, first of all, um, you know that the Hampton Academy was built in 1939, the second 65, and the third phase was built in 1974. You can do the math. Those years, it has serviced this town very, very well. And I, I want to make that very clear. It is, it is maintained by Keith and his department uh, to the best of what that building affords to us. But it is in desperate need of repair. And I'm going to highlight those areas that I think are critical. The first area that I would like to highlight will be the upgrade to mechanicals. What does that mean? That's the electrical systems. We, our electrical system, there are classrooms with one or two plugs. In 1939 and 1965, that wasn't, you know, you didn't need it. You had one overhead projector or a, a slide projector. Yeah. Um, now we have uh, computers and uh, smart boards and all kinds of technology in those rooms. We must upgrade the electrical. Um, even outside, if you notice, we have a transformer right outside of our building, mm -hmm. uh, in, 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 in very close proximity to our building, totally inappropriate with wires running into the building. That all needs to be underground and it all needs to be taken care of. That is a major, major issue. All of the boards are going to be changed out and the, and the power, so that, that's critical. The, the second area in mechanicals, obviously, is the air quality. We uh, there there is no system of 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 the air moving from uh, outside to inside and keeping the air quality so that it's at a level um, that is healthy for the kids. Now you'll say, open the window, right? <laughs> well, the problem is is that yeah. we have issues with the windows. We can't open all the windows. We've actually had staff that have have been injured trying to open those windows. We bring in the custodians if we need to open a window. That is no way to keep the air quality at the level that we need it, especially when you're talking about the winter. You were talking about your budget meetings in the snow. I mean, that's no different. I mean, we have kids in a classroom. Um, yeah. and Even that in this building, may I? Yeah. You've got Jumped duct in. work. You've got air, air return. The machine just flipped yeah. and turned on, and it sucked air out, and it pulled in fresh air. Yeah. There's a CO2 sensor here somewhere monitoring our carbon ex exhalation yeah. Yeah. you don't have that in a school where the kids are sitting captive seven hours each day yeah. they've done what they can they put ceiling fans in to try to move air open the windows uh, but that's maybe the single biggest mechanical concern is that yeah. you can't regulate the heat or the cool you can't regulate the temperature you can't move the air there isn't any duct work it's the same in all of our buildings but that'll be one big one and in addition to the other uh, area that's of great concern is the plumbing Yes. And um, our bathrooms are um, are just in, in terrible disorder. And we could go in right now and, and gut them. But we know we're talking about gutting bathrooms, and the t cost is well over $100,000 per bathroom. Mm -hmm. you, you, you're going to spend a million dollars on reviving all the bathrooms. And here's the other problem. We have sections of the building that we have no bathrooms for our staff. Mm -hmm. So we have teachers out in that sixth grade wing with no, no bathrooms. We have bathrooms in teachers' lunch rooms that, that are like right there in their lunch areas. It's just inappropriate space and not used well and, and decaying. We've had issues with plumbing because of uh, pipes that are as old as those buildings now, just remember that, um, that need to be ripped out and replaced. And uh, so along with the electrical and the air quality and the heating system, the plumbing system needs to be. Uh, redone. 
when we talk about costs, I want you to keep in mind those areas that I just mentioned because those have caused the project to increase in cost. And we specifically targeted those areas, and that's where we saw about a 4% increase in costs. So you got to keep that in mind when I, when I continue. Um, in a, I think I've covered the mechanicals pretty well. Um, we are going to be looking at safety. Nathan referred to safety. We still need to upgrade safety. Um, some of that is around traffic and the way the cars and, uh, and buses come in and out of that, where the parents drop off. All of that in our project, and I'll show you that in a minute when we look at the, the layout of the, of the plan, uh, you'll see that we have rerouted buses and parents and all of our kids walking in to create a much more safe environment. Right now, we have kids standing out in literally a driveway where, parent, where cars and people come in and out. Delivery vans. <laughs> yeah, it's I'd... just not, uh, there's no place for the kids to go, quite frankly, other than inside the building. And so those are areas in the mechanical aspects of this building that we really want to address. And we're talking about traffic, but there's also internal traffic. And so part of the safety and security is about uh, about ac entrance and egress. It's about the, the width of corridors, uh, mm -hmm. lockers, and kids in lockers, plugging up the corridors, making sure that stairwells uh, and the stair towers are have appropriate rise over run uh, so that... I mean, you can go to Hampton Academy right now. We don't fall down the stairs at Hampton Academy. We fall up, up the, the stairs, stairs at Hampton yeah. Academy because the rise is different yeah. than you would expect and your toe trips up. The so, so internal traffic is important as well. So uh, moving on, one of, the, one of the areas that is critical now is our programs. And I'm going to start with special education. In 1939 and in 1965, there wasn't an ELL program. There was not an English language learner program. Yeah. Uh, we didn't have a social worker in 1939 or 1965 or matter 1974. Did we have social workers? Um, but and 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 PT and OT and speech and language were very limited. Now all of those services are provided at Hampton Academy with no space. Mm -hmm. They're using uh, restored closet space. They're using um, anywhere where they can, in some cases out in the hallway, but there isn't uh, appropriate spaces for those kinds of services, and often those services are done one-on-one -on -one with students or in small groups. And again, uh, it's, it's a significant uh, deficit in that building. Uh, some of the classrooms that we use for the special education where we have multiple teachers using one classroom it isn't the best situation for those youngsters who have learning challenges and who often need a more quiet environment. So this project will allow us to upgrade those rooms uh, to provide services for youngsters. In addition, we have got, as you know, we have school counselors and we have nursing facilities. The, there's no confidentiality. If you want to go see the guidance counselor, there's no place to wait to see her. You have to sit out in the hallway. Well. <laughs> doesn't take long for somebody to say, well, what are you doing out in the hallway? And that's not appropriate when you're a middle school age youngster, mm -hmm. and it's just not. Same with a nurse. She could have two or three people in her beds in there, and she has people waiting out in the hallway. Um, and that's not a, a good situation, again, for our students to be out in a hallway waiting to see those services. And, and, and just, you see, you see this when you go over to Hampton Academy, there's other youngsters that are waiting out in the hallway and nobody really knows why. Well, sometimes they're waiting to see Mr. O'Connor. <laughs> and I'm not always sure that it's just to have lunch with him, but that's not appropriate. If a youngster makes a poor choice in class, he shouldn't be out in the hallway for everybody to look at. Yeah, yeah you make a mistake, but people come in and out of that building and there's our students sitting out there yeah. for everyone to see and it's just not appropriate. So. Again, those, those essential uh, programs and services that we offer do not have adequate space in that school. Um, uh, classroom, I talked earlier tonight about core subject areas, and um, there are a number of classrooms that are not 900 square foot classrooms, but they're close. And we're not gonna, we're not gonna dibble over 10 square feet or 20 square feet. But there are other classrooms like science classrooms, STEM classrooms, our library that are well undersized. Yes. Let me give you an example. Um, four out of the six science classrooms are regular 900 square 
feet. The state calls for 1,400 in a science lab. Think about it. In a lab, you have lab tables and you have water and all the other things that go along with a science classroom or a STEM classroom, and those classrooms are well undersized. We do have two, however, that meet those that standard. And those rooms, when the renovation happens, will remain as science rooms and will just be painted and updated with electrical and all the other pieces. But um, we're not creating new rooms. We're, 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 uh, we'll keep those the way they are. But four out of the six are substandard, uh, un undersized, and don't have the, the, the services that kids, they're regular classrooms, and they're not science classrooms. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, in the age that we're in, this is a really important area uh, for those youngsters at middle school level. So that's another um, uh, area that we would like to see some attention. Um, lots of discussion about why would we need a gymnasium? Well, when you don't have one that you can use, it, you, you've got to have something. Um, the gymnasium that e we've already talked about, Eastman Gym, you can't use it. It's too small. It, do it doesn't have the floor space. Then we say, well, okay, we'll do, um, we'll do uh, volleyball there. Well, I've seen them play volleyball and they hit the roof because the roof is too low for a volleyball, so you can't use it for that. They've used it for wrestling, okay? But where are the mats? There's no storage upstairs. The mats are downstairs. So when the kids are wrestling, they got to carry the mats upstairs if they use that facility. Do you see it's just not a, a viable uh, gymnasium? The other thing is, is if you're playing there, the bleachers abut the sideline. So if yeah. you're playing, there's a, there's a, uh, a very high risk uh, for injury. Uh, same with the downstairs. It has no seating capacity. Uh, it has a rubber floor, uh, and it's uh, not appropriate for, we can't use it at all for games, uh, for any kind of activity. We've been renting space at the rim um, for both our boys and girls, and for other activities, by the way. There are other things that we do that we need a big space, and we've rented uh, the rim, and um, and unfortunately we have to bus, in which we adds to the busing, we have to bus the kids over to the rim in order for them to use it. Yeah. Um, I just think it's time. We worked very closely with the Recreation Department, uh, Diana and the HYA, and we've met with them, we've talked with them, and we know that, as you know, it's been very important to the schools to be a part of this community. So that school is not a school, it's a community school. It's a community facility, and it's open for all of, all of the folks in the community to use, and this would be a um, the the auditor uh, the gymnasium would be a wonderful way for that to happen. Um, it will seat 500. Um, it's a full size gym. It will have a curtain that will drop down the middle so that you can have two activities because we do have health classes and physical education classes that that need space. Um, we'll, we're able to do that and. Um, when you have basketball, <clears throat> there are multiple rims so that you can have girls on one side, boys on the other, that kind of thing, so that it allows us much more flexibility for the kinds of programming and the activities that Dave has at, at Hampton Academy. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I know that there's been a lot of talk about that, but I have to tell you that that's a, a, a very important part of the school day. When we talked about late school, that, that gym's being, those, uh, those areas are, need to be used. The kids are after school. They're trying to, they, they need to be active and involved in clubs and activities, and we need that kind of a facility for that. If I could just make yeah. one quick comment. 30 years ago, I was an Iowa official, and I came in to fill in for another official and went to that school and didn't even know why I was there because there was no way that the gymnasium is big enough mm -hmm. as a regulation court. Yeah. And we're only adding on to the cost by having to ship everybody out all the time. Mm -hmm. so I just wanted to make that comment. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Steve? It's unbelievable there are no locker rooms. Right. Mm. Right. There, right. there are what looks like some kind of a, a nightmare locker room for girls and boys, but they're not locker rooms. You, at most, you might be able to change your clothes, it, and that's even a stretch. But there are no showers. There's no, none of that. There's just it's not there's no there. No privacy. It's um, not there. It's there's unbelievable. There's no rooms for the teams to join. You know, at, when they have a break during the game, there's no team rooms. Uh, I know that when we have 
we don't use it anymore, but when we when they were using it, they would have kids in classrooms. The teams, the visiting teams, would be in classrooms. Uh, that's why we went to the rim because it made much so much more sense to have the but facility. The, but the, a new gym would have all of that rooms, will be there. There facilities. will be girls' locker rooms, boys' locker rooms. There will be showers mm -hmm. and team uh, a team room for visiting team and our home team. And uh, again. I, I, this is about the community. This is about all of our kids using a facility that um, that is is safe, mm -hmm. sound, and meets all the the standards that we need. We had to get changed in our cars. We had to go back out and get changed as in our referees. Cars. Yeah, as there referees. are no lockers to put your yeah. clothes in or yeah. lock them up, or you know, it's just, it's just not there. Okay. Um, I want to go to one other place that has been concerning and it's obviously on the list around reconstruction and that's an auditorium. I think you've heard a lot about that. Mm -hmm. We are not building a new auditorium. We are just redoing Eastman Gym and we're creating that into an auditorium. Because right, and, and we, are, we are going to uh, increase the space because the problem right now at Eastman, Eastman Gym, which David uses as an auditorium, Mm -hmm. for assemblies and all kinds of things that happen in the community, there's not enough space. Dave can't put his entire school and faculty in that gym at one time. Yeah. It doesn't meet uh, code. Mm -hmm. David often has to call over next door to the fire station and have a fireman on site. And it, may, and it only uh, um, becomes more difficult when you have visitors, when we have Veterans Day ceremonies and yeah. Memorial yeah. Day, or we've had uh, parents, where pa parents are in, coming in to see the kids, you know, perform and yeah. plays. Uh, we are, we have I issues, and we have not a appropriate facility in a community that values the arts, that values all of the dance and music. Uh, we, it's, 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 it's quite um, sad that there's not an appropriate facility. So again, I see this as a community space. Center School, I went to their concert. It was great, by the way. It was all those first graders. They were as cute as can be. Um, they had to rent uh, Winnicott because we, we don't have a facility in Hampton for our other schools, for Marston and for Center to use. If we had an auditorium, we could use that for all of our kids, mm -hmm. um, whether they be um, Hampton Academy kids or whether they be um, uh, Center in Marston. And, and honestly, it would be a great... You know, I remember bringing my two, my kids, and it wasn't that long ago, Sonny, um, but Hampton always had, <laughs> I couldn't resist, Hampton always had a playhouse, and I used to bring the kids over to the playhouse, and you always were, had lots of arts and drama, and that isn't here anymore, and I think it's a, it's just my opinion, but it's a missed opportunity for your community because you have a, an active Hampton Arts Network um, and you have this wonderful beach time, summer, with all the things that go on down there. Again, that would be, I know in Salem, they use their auditorium in the summer, rent it out for summer plays. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, so we look at this as a, Nathan yep. and I were thinking about it as a revenue source too because it will, it can be that way. Mm -hmm. um, but not for a moment do I think that this isn't a valuable uh, area for our school. Our students' uh, standards in English language arts, listening, viewing, speaking. Mm -hmm. So our youngsters are involved in um, speeches and getting up and doing oratoricals. And this would, this would enhance that opportunity for those kinds of activities for our kids during the school day. I think our English teachers were very clear with me when I met with the English department that this would be a valuable resource for them. They used to call it elocution when I elocution, was Elocution, that's but, right. That's right. Um, just a couple of points, too. The, um, the wing that was put on in 1974, the sixth grade wing, and Nathan was mentioning something about crammed corridors and not being able to get through because the locker doors are open and so forth. We have had a tendency to to uh, build cheap in this town. And when you do that, the product is never satisfactory and it's practically a waste of money. That sixth grade wing is terrible. It's always been terrible and it will continue to be terrible until somebody gets rid of it. But the taxpayer's money was spent on that thing. 
even uh, when we were talking uh, about the police budget with the police chief in the town, um, the police station at the beach is new, but he's finding already that maintenance costs are going up because at that at the point in time in which it was built, I think it was 2004, uh, certainly there was an opportunity for Leeds certified buildings and uh, the, the heat and, and all sorts of things. And of course we didn't do that. So I guess you could say that was at least partly built on the cheap. You end up by regretting it. The plan that's being proposed here is a 40 to 50 year plan. This should take care of the needs. I was in um, Mrs. Warburton's classroom a couple of weeks ago. She teaches science. There are two electrical outlets in there. There's no, there's no science table. The box is up to the ceiling. There's no storage. The superintendent has been talking with Hampton Falls about the possibility of Hampton Falls tuitioning some students to Hampton. And it's a good idea. It would be beneficial to them, and it would bring in a little revenue to us. But what school wants to tuition out their students to a facility that is no longer really capable of providing for the scientific needs. And even the youngsters now are into producing TV, and these kids are all doing all this incredible stuff. And that's what they need to go out into the modern world. We're trying to assist them to get out into the world. We uh, might, Kathleen, want to mention the... Uh, efforts that came out of the study committee for some uh, extra funding, like the Hampton Wave and so forth? Right. Um, the, the, we, as you all know, we have a facilities committee. About 20 to 25 people are involved in it, um, and uh, they have been working on this, and I'm going to go over the design of the school really quickly with you, but uh, we have a group of parents who have stepped up and um, are looking to create what we would call a wave foundation that would uh, raise money uh, for uh, the school and for the district actually you know initially it would be focused on Hampton Academy mm -hmm. the monies that they raised um, and then in in years beyond that they would support the other schools in the district so um, Mike Meldoon and a number of uh, yep. other members are working on that and it's got some real strong potential so that's one revenue we also know that we called and talked to the town and there's two hundred and sixty three thousand dollars in um, impact fees that are uh, earmarked, earmarked for the school and uh, I had an opportunity to talk with uh, Tracy Emmerich last, last week and um, he's encouraged us to access that, that, that funds for the project. So um, we're looking at things. We're not, you know, we, we did, uh, Nathan and I have been working with the uh, Department of Ed and their, their team around uh, uh, building aid, and it's still not there. But we are ready. Uh, Nathan and I are ready to go to Concord. I've said this uh, before. I said it to the selectmen. Uh, we will go, and we are going to plead our case. Uh, because the infrastructure is as important as roads and bridges because without a good learning environment for our students they won't be able to drive on those roads and across those bridges so let's get education uh, taken care of here and uh, as we move forward and can I take a few minutes and go over this plan just one quick thing and Regina can confirm the selectmen have placed or have the article prepared to uh, get the, the land to the school, assuming that the renovation if, bond passes. If the renovation passes. passes, it still has the same language, that if the language passes, the town uh, warrant has this, that the yes. land would be transferred over the school. Correct. I was passed last year without that language, so it's done. Mm -hmm. We've accepted it as soon as they pass it on. Uh, it, it passed. I just wanted to make the sure didn't pass. that that yes. was in this it's year in as well, because we really have to do So this. let me let me just go really quickly through this, because you've all seen this a lot. You have it in your packet. It looks like this, and it's the same that's up on the board. I think that's the one I thought would be the best to go to. What do they have, Nathan? It's also uh, next to last in your other packet. A little no. bit bigger for you. Yes. So if you want to take a look at that. that and look at the lower level, you'll see in the lower level, you'll, you'll, uh, if you look at the, it, the, the bottom left-hand side where the lower level is, you'll see the gymnasium, uh, the locker rooms, the bathrooms, all of that yeah. will be new construction. 
and a new elevator. Yeah, and a new <laughs> elevator, right, right. And an elevator that doesn't uh, go out into a classroom or into the teacher's room or next to the bathrooms. It's awful. And then uh, the, the current basement area with a, what I call the bunker and other areas will remain storage. Uh, right now we have music rooms in the basement mm -hmm. with no acoustics and we have band and it's just not an appropriate place for kids. So that will all be used for storage. Um, we will be doing some work in enhancing the kitchen area. We have problems with the kitchen. It's too small. We have, we're washing dishes next to cutting, cutting fruits and vegetables. Uh, we've been cited by the department to make some changes. So uh, that those changes have been made to expand the kitchen. Our ladies in the kitchen didn't have a locker room, didn't have a place to hang their coats, put their pocketbooks, and um, appropriate um, restroom facilities are not available for them in that area. So again, we have um, addressed that in this plan. We've also addressed a program, and I, I referred to it earlier, still on the lower level, and that would be an area for our um, media productions, the shock news, yeah. and a place that we can hold meetings that will be aired. We've been using this room, and it's hard because you have, the town has so many things going on. Right. And uh, we would be able to do our own filming and broadcasting um, at Hampton Academy in that area. So we have a studio area. Not only will it be for public use and the, and the school board, but for the youngsters during the day for their, for their media uh, program. Uh, that pretty much takes care of the first floor. If you go to the, I mean, the lower level, go to the first floor right above it. Again, you'll see that the red will indicate new construction. Well, the phase one is that is the uh, gymnasium that's done. So don't be look, don't be looking at that. But what will be added to this will be a music area. It looks like we call it a knuckle up in the back, um, and you'll see that we have added a music room a band room and, and chorus, because we don't have any of that facility right now. They're using makeshift places mm -hmm. that when we have chorus, um, it's a very popular program at Hampton Academy. Well over 200 kids participate in chorus. We don't have a place to put them. So she's had to break them up into smaller groups. Um, these, the facility and the way it's been designed will allow us to do that because you can see it abuts the stage you see that? If you look at that plan, yep. it abuts the stage. We flip the stage at Hampton Academy, so the stage is in the rear, uh, opposite of where it is right now. And, uh, and that, that way, our band, chorus, and music classes will be able to use that as an area, too, for their, um, uh, for their performances as well as their practicing. On Tuesday night at the school board meeting, we have a video showing uh, and talking about the renovation and the current uh, situation around music and chorus, so you'll be able to see that and get a greater detail for that. We also have a team up there. You can see one of the things that this building does, it brings our teams together. Middle school operates on a team. That means that we have four core subjects, and those, those kids stay together. And you say, well, why do they do that? Because they stay together, they have four teachers, it just improves communication, it improves discipline and the opportunity for teachers to talk back and forth and to make sure that all this their student they're, they're on top of all their students work so for this plan allows that right now we have teams scattered we have some teams on one floor and the rest of the team is on the other floor because you can't match four classrooms together this plan does that it also provides space up there for special education rooms um, that are close by the team. The kids don't travel far. They're in their team area. And then they go right down the hall to their special education if they need to, to get some supports. It might be math. It might be English language arts uh, for support. Uh, so that's the first floor. The other thing we did was uh, when you walk into Hampton Academy and you all, mo most of you have been there. As I look around the room, you've all had tours. And, we, and David's, um, David and I talked uh, today, and Mary Louise asked us, we will uh, make ourselves available for a tour. If you haven't been in and would like to visit, mm -hmm. uh, David or one of his staff members will be happy to take you. We, we, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll do them at, at your convenience. Yeah, call me and we'll try to blend yeah. the stuff together and get everybody organized. I think Brian came last year and did yeah. a tour. 
I would too. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm going to say. I'm I know what you're going to say. I'm expecting it. I serve on a committee that has representatives from Hampton Falls and North Hampton. Mm -hmm. okay. And I've raised, you're well aware that SAU 21 school budget didn't pass for those two communities. I've raised it with the individuals and because I, for a couple of years, I've been advocating that you build a brand new school onto the Center Street School. Okay, Center Street School's mm -hmm. got a lot of history. It's the oldest public school in the state. Yeah, I know. Common sense would tell you that if you start tearing an old building apart, you're going to run into all kinds of problems. You can build build a brand new building, but in the long run it'll be a lot cheaper. You could even build it with an indoor swimming pool and still come in cheaper. <laughs> you know, when you get done with this, <clears throat> You're fighting, yeah, but we don't want to do that. With right. the public, Department of Public Works, they've got what 30 warrant articles. You know, the, the infrastructure has been neglected in this town for what 40, 50 years. You know, if I actually one of the warrant articles, the one for the force main from the the beach to the transfer station. They've got the state looking at them. They've got the EPA looking at them. If if something happens again, they're, they're not going to be nice to Hampton, believe me. You can build a brand new school. They would love to, or a regional academy. And bring the cost down for everybody because the town, other towns will contribute. You know, we're, we're still going around the same trip. We, um I, as a member of the school board, approached Hampton Falls last year, um, yeah, Hampton Falls, several times. Mm -hmm. Although the citizens of Hampton, some citizens of Hampton Falls wanted it, the school board at Hampton Falls said they did not, were not interested. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This year, the school board of Hampton <coughs> has voted not to approach Hampton Falls this year. Yeah. And Hampton at Hampton Falls has now put on their budget a seven point three million dollar renovation project. Again. Mm. North Hampton we have not approached. Yeah. Seedwork um, would not be interested because yeah. they have their own middle yeah. school. I'm I'm going to scare all of you, especially Sonny. <laughs> First of all, that the Academy building is, is a really treasured uh, part of the community. Number two, if you should choose to build brand new in another location, the first thing that's going to happen is that the selectmen are going to want the academy for their offices, etc. You don't want to go there. It could be the courthouse also and a senior right. center. Yeah, well. <laughs> okay. Except that, except that I think it's important to note that nearly everything we're talking about, you'll have to do then anyway. Mm -hmm. Yes because you won't inhabit that building for all of the myriad of ideas that you might come up with right, without right. dealing with the mechanicals and the right. safety, the yeah, plumbing, exactly the air right. quality. Yeah. Nobody should be put in that building to right. sit I eight hours disagree. a day, 260 You're days right. a year without Completely. some kind of, it would all have you got, I mean, you don't go into any contemporary building today where they're not moving air. The fact that you got kids in there all day long without CO2 sensors Point. and movement of air, yeah. it, it's crazy, right? So don't, don't miss the fact that other communities in the seacoast have done it, where you build something new, thinking that you won't keep the old thing, but then you do, and, and you still put right. several million dollars in to upgrade all those mechanical yeah, systems. Gotcha. And you repave the parking lot, and nobody knows where I'm talking about, but <laughs> you don't have to drive far to be there, so. We and to know, talk about the interest. We right. know that, oh. and Nathan's gonna get to the price tag in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, we know that people were concerned about the price tag. We're, we're, this, our school board is very aware of that. I think you saw in their budget, they did everything they could to level fund that budget without hurting the kids, because the kids mm -hmm. didn't get hurt yep. at all. But we, we made every effort, and we, we said no to, they said no to the HR person. They said, you know, we'll use uh, uh, funds in IDEA to help support our position. And they did everything they could because they know that price tag is, is a scary, but a new building would have cost far more than that. In 2011, a new building at Hampton Academy was, was, was priced at $28 million and a renovation at 26. So I contend that five or six years later, we're still under that. 
Mm -hmm. yeah. And so uh, we got a great uh, project here that meets the needs of our kids, meets the community for the future. And, um, and Nathan will get into the money in a minute, which I think is a great deal. But let me just go over a couple more things. In this project, and you can look at it in the purple on the first floor and other places in the building, we have an English language learner lab. We have special ed labs. We have a place for PT. You know, they need a room with the mats and other things that they do. I mean, we have youngsters that are in wheelchairs and have other, mm -hmm. um, you yeah. know, equipment that they need extra support in during the day. Um, so we have all of those spaces now. Speech and language, they finally have a spot. Our, our, our social worker, our guidance counselors, we have a grant where we bring in a, a certified drug and alcohol counselor that helps children with, with, uh, with learning about the, um, you know, the effects of drugs and alcohol. So she sharing, sharing a spot. So this plan addresses all those needs, and you can see that in, in much of it is in the purple area. Second floor just lays right on top of the first floor, um, and um, it just mirrors what's below it. So I'm not going to get into that, but it's all the team rooms upstairs. You can see that by the layout. of, And then I think we have the art room upstairs, um, and... Um, our library has extended a little bit. Um, we were able to um, open up that library a little bit more so we yeah. have more space. And the professionals that the school district hired to work on this were incredible. And they listened to us. They listened to the members of the committee. And they t actually took some of our suggestions, even though they groaned one or two times. <laughs> uh, it, there was a lot of feed in to, to get this all pulled together. So Nathan's going to talk a little bit about the cost. Oops, I'm sorry. Before you start the cost, yep. I'm going to have something's going to be eating away at me the whole time. <coughs> and I think you're going to address it during your talk, okay? And what I'm coming from is we, just, we got me going with the $28 million five years ago and then the $26 million. We're doing this for $24 million. Mm -hmm. But I've lived through the big dig, which was $2 billion. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> $16 billion, And when they pay the interest rate off, it's $32 billion. Seabrook, nuclear plant, double, triple, quadruple. So my question is, and I'm sure you've got it covered, that in doing the 24 million, I'm sure you've signed contracts, are going to sign contracts, or have discussed them in some way, that the people who are gonna build it for us with the thing, it's going to have fixed costs. I'm making this up. So it'll be 24 million, and if it takes three years, it's not gonna suddenly take six years, and it's not 24, it's now become 36. What have you done to discuss those things? And you can probably present it. I'll present it. Yep. Okay. Excellent. Yes. Great question. Great question. So, so the costs in your second packet, it starts with some green tax impact. I'll do it just a minute. That's on the back. If you come in a handful of pages, the costs are broken out like I'm doing on the slide. It looks like this with a, our logo at the top left. <coughs> project estimate. Project budget. It's page uh, eight. Yeah. I numbered the pages and then forget. <laughs> so, you <laughs> got it. The chair, um, the chair uh, mentioned the project team. Um, let me reference them as I go. So the all through the summer, the spring and the summer and into the fall, this project team that we've been meeting with, this project advisory committee, which included our consultants. Uh, talked about different alternatives, ways to approach this project, changes that we could, could be considered. They, they questioned what would the impact financially be of making some of these changes, cutting out this or shaving off this. Um, and, and all through this process, uh, we were supported by a team of consultants who ultimately yes. will become, we anticipate, members of our project team. The first hire that we did, if you want to call it a hire, the first contract that we wrote was with an owner's project management firm, Trident Advisors is out of Salem, New Hampshire, mm -hmm. and uh, the members of their team go to Gillette Stadium, uh, Rose Wharf, uh, big projects, like, that's their background. Yeah. This is a, 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 a smaller uh, advising uh, team that makes their living as owner's project managers uh, the best comment that I heard was, we'll be your conscience. 
and so we were led by uh, Gino Baroni and uh, and Paul Panalina uh, is uh, his partner in this project, and, and with their support, we secured H. L. Turner Group as architect and engineers of record out of Concord, New Hampshire, mm -hmm. and. Beyond that, we've selected Bonnet, Page, and Stone of Laconia, New Hampshire, as the construction management firm. So they have gone back. They were telling us in the spring, for instance, the superintendent referenced that, that construction costs were easily going to rise 8 to 12 percent. Uh, and so they worked, they've worked really hard with their estimates and with our design to contemplate ways to keep those impacts down. The costs that they have brought forward $25,950,000 are broken down into three elements. Hard cost, soft cost, and, and contingency. The hard cost, $22 million is up from $21,895 last year. That's about a 4.5% increase, and that's the only increase that we've seen in the, in the projection or in the, in the budget. And that's really driven by the mechanicals we've been talking about, because the trades simply haven't recovered since 08 and the economic downturn and that's only exacerbated a problem which is we don't go into the trades anymore uh, we're very much a service oriented industry or economy uh, and there are high tech and more professional fields but there aren't a lot of young people going into yeah. mechanicals like the plumbing the electrical uh, you name it so that market doesn't have the same capacity that it did a decade ago, and as a result, as demand grows, supply is low, costs are rising. So, are you telling me we don't need plumbers and electricians for the kids to be trained in going forward? Oh, we absolutely need it, and the schools are doing their best. That just the reality seems to be from from the perspective of these consultants sharing uh, with us about the industry. There aren't as many plumbers as there were a decade ago. There aren't as many electricians as there were. There's a shortage of them now. That's what I mean. I, there's, it's, it's a great opportunity, and if we can convince more young people to move in those directions, great. But the reality is, yeah. when you go to on site to this project and you see them all walk in, you will be shocked by the age, relatively, <laughs> of the tradesmen that come to do all this work. Yeah. Because right. they just don't seem to be able to cultivate interest in the younger generation. Yeah. They should, but they don't. And as a result, the supply is just doesn't meet the demand right now. It'll be now. a two hundred dollar an hour for a plumber. It'll be crazy, and it's and that's exactly what's coming. And and the MEPs, the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing, they can name their price. Is what's happening because the more business that gets <coughs> generated, the more construction projects there are, the more they pick and choose the ones they want to work on, and then name their price. So that's going to be one of the cost issues that we're going to work to, to control. So Thank you. so hard costs are construction costs. That yeah. is your demolition your new construction, your existing space renovation, site work, although we're not doing we're not doing brand new fields or anything like that, our site work is limited essentially to the site and the parking and access, bus loop, et cetera. So those hard costs, 22,000, 22 million nine. Mm -hmm. Soft costs are, I call them the related services. This is the contracts with our owner's pr project manager, with our architect and engineering firm. Um, it includes Furniture, fixtures, and equipment, another acronym, FF&E. In any project like this, you have an allowance for and an anticipation of FF&E, how much money in the project is going to support new tables and desks and chairs and, uh, and new equipment that might be installed, like technology equipment and the like. We've made a commitment to try to keep 75% of our FF&E in place and make 25% investment with the project in new. The further commitment will be that we work ourselves into an inventory turn where we start to see that other 75 replaced over a reasonable period of time. Mm -hmm. We don't intend to walk in with all brand new classroom desks and chairs and cafeteria tables and the like. Many of those elements will end up being, or some of those elements will, but our plan right now, based on an inventory that we took in the building of all that we have in the district and in that building for furniture, fixtures, equipment, is that we can salvage about 75% moving forward. Technology is another area covered in the soft costs, and we have about $150,000 allowance for the technology elements, but we have been investing, for instance, we've upgraded a fiber in that building uh, in the last uh, three, four months, five months, uh, because we just need to provide that kind of bandwidth to, to, to support the, yeah. the uh, instructional practices and the use of technology in the classroom. 
And so a lot of the, uh, the technology that we've been using will be leveraged moving forward, and we'll do everything we can to support that. So we've tried to keep these soft costs low. The other piece that's in the soft cost is commission, which is the third party review and testing that is so essential to ensuring that we've protected the investment of the taxpayer. So you pour concrete footings, somebody, somebody tests the pour, and tests the concrete, and samples that and tests it over time to ensure that it hardened as it was supposed to, and it'll have the tensile strength and it'll support as it, it was intended to by design. Do the same thing with steel and a number of other elements. You're going to um, have somebody on site that tests the concrete, is that what I mean? Right? They actually take, mm -hmm. you pour this and you pour this and you pour this and you pour this and I take and sample those. The big dig, when they were pouring the concrete, they're supposed to deliver within so many hours, right. yeah. and they didn't do it, so they went back out again. Fabricated the approval permit to brought in and brought in old concrete. I don't need eight hours or 24 hours to set, and they put a lot of the big dig with bad concrete. But to have somebody test it would be phenomenal. But actually, I take it that. away. We'll do that. We did it with the when we did the two room addition at Center School. We did commissioning, uh, testing all through, and it really is a. It's again, it's an insurance. Yeah. Insurance package of sorts to make sure that that the design specs are being followed by your contractor. So, okay. so that's all part of. I will tell you sure. that our architects and engineering fees we've negotiated at about half of what normal. Mm -hmm. Part of it is I think that architectural engineering firm was hungry the day we walked in and said, "Would you be interested?" The timing, the timing was right. I don't think there's any chance they let us have that rate today. But so our our soft costs at 1.95 million stay mm -hmm. the same as they were, and then. In response to some of the questions and concerns that are expressed about renovating, we have an owner's project contingency of $1.1 million. We have every expectation that we will avoid using some chunk of that, but we have to put that in to be prudent. There is very little earth we will disturb that we have not already disturbed. Mm -hmm. We will demolish the sixth grade wing, we will build in its place. We will pave over that which has been paved over before. So there's there's very little exposure to new soil, although there is some. There's a greater concern for sure about elements of that building internally that we will unearth things that we have to then confront. We've already abated every known instance of asbestos that's in that building, and that's a lot of the spaces that have been exposed yeah. and addressed. So there's very little comparatively to some schools that we'll have to address, but still we have that contingency. All of that is wrapped into the project budget, which is 25,950,000. What we have with our construction management firm, Bonifacio and Stone, with the support of our architects and engineers and with the scrutiny of our owner project manager and the review and support of the project advisory committee and the school board is, a, is an initial guaranteed maximum price. So contractually, when we commit, the, the team must work within the, constru the construction costs that have been identified. Do they also have time target dates built in? There are target dates built in and times, and their general conditions are fixed as a part of that. Uh, general conditions being essentially their mobilization costs. I've got to bring a trailer on site, I've got to secure the site. Uh, it's the, it's, I, I, I don't want to, it's, it's hard to call it administrative, but the administrative uh, and the business end of what the contractor has to provide is fixed in the general conditions. And this will all be in writing. And it's all in writing. It's a contract. Yeah, absolutely. Rise. And so, <laughs> and so what, will, what will come, though, is after... Now, remember, this is all being done with estimates based upon concept. There aren't any blueprints right now. Like, I can't roll out the, the stack of blueprints and go... So what comes first after a vote is that the architects and engineers have to go quickly to work to turn this into buildable documents. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. that will drive a final guaranteed maximum price where we'll have to do some we'll have to do some design I'm adjustment to make my, the, my original question yeah. but you're saying now they haven't got the blueprints they haven't done this that so they're going to give a final I'm concerned the final goes from 26 million to 30 million you can't is you that can't. a possibility you no can't. no you can't. we don't have the money no because I we have already have voted and supported but, so they have an initial guaranteed maximum price that they're committed to working with in yeah. what they're not what they have for flexibility is that built into their estimates they have a construction manager's contingency, and we have a $1.1 million contingency. And so as we negotiate the final GMP, we have those to work within. But we have to stay within those. And, and what it drives, what it ultimately gets back to is that there could be adjustment in scope. But it's less about scope and it's more about choice. 
So Keith has an expectation of what he wants to put for a roof on that. Mm -hmm. And there's an estimate built in. But if steel prices go up dramatically in the seven months or eight months while we're designing, we have to make allowances for that steel. He may have to suffer with a slightly less robust roof than what he had anticipated. Those will be adjustments that we have to make, but all within some margin, because they have committed to deliver the general scope within that number. But we won't come, it won't be 30 million. And here's one of the nice things. Bonnet Page and Stone, were, we, were, we were in the middle of one of our meetings recently, and, and they were clarifying they have not in, I forget, and I want to quote it, I should be able to quote it, they have not ever gone back and said, please float another Warren article and ask for another X dollars yeah. because we can't deliver the scope within. Uh, and, and one of the reasons why we made the decision with the support of the board early on to choose an owner's project management firm was we've got an owner's project manager who makes a, makes a living on avoiding that, that yeah. result. Uh, they will serve as our conscience, but they will also serve as their own best marketing agent, <laughs> and 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 will deliver us uh, within the within the budget that we've anticipated. Yeah. Some you. of you may remember a couple of years ago the most recent addition to Center School, and I can remember Nathan standing in front of us at the public hearing saying, "We will not spend one penny more. You are authorizing this amount." But we will not spend one penny more than we need to. And he came in under budget. Under budget and at, on time. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Brian? Um, <laughs> tell you the I didn't check the past. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had the initial concept 86250 last year. Did that pass? It did. So that was when. We, we floated a warrant article two years ago, yeah. right? Eight, Eighty-six thousand two hundred fifty dollars, yes. and that was spent in that first cycle on the owners' project manager and the architects and engineers' mm -hmm. okay. services to bring us to bring us to this point, and right. with all the pretty, you know, the renderings and the pretty pictures, mm -hmm. we went back to the board this spring after the vote, and we talked first to Gino, the owners' project manager, and he met with the other two partners. And they came back and we reported out to the board that if they would commit another up to $30,000, we could continue to work with that same team and run this cycle again to bring us to this vote. Mm -hmm. So we made that 30000 fit in the operating, we found the dollars in the operating budget. Okay. Um, and didn't, did, because we hadn't floated another warrant article, we'd only floated the project and the project failed to pass. Mm -hmm. So they encumbered $30,000 and let us spend that on these same players. That was a good idea. Um, I know you said architecturally and everything else, as far as the engineering is, we're kind of getting ready to stop. Where are we engineering-wise on this plan? Are we at 5%, 20%? Uh, I, don't, I don't know that the architect would put us in the 100% yeah. range. I don't think right. that they would say between 0 and 100, because well, I mean, I guess fundamentally, you might say 5% or something like that. Okay. They haven't, what they have done is they have done what you've got. Mm -hmm. Like the floor plan that you've got, which is not to scale. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, it's pretty close. He's an architect, so he's not yeah. doing it. But it's, it's, not a, it's not a design document. It's a concept document. Mm -hmm. And they have worked to put together minimum standards and expectations mm -hmm. so that the Bonnet, Page, and Stone construction management firm can say, that many square feet of that kind of material for that wall mm -hmm. would cost this much with insulation, labor, et cetera, take this long, it'll pass. Mm -hmm. And they've run their estimates based on all of that. So there's an allowance there for the kind of roofing that they would put on and the number of square feet that they would need and what it would cost normally to install that. And they've done that with every component, including the mechanicals, the electrical, the plumbing. Um, but they've done that all uh, as a narrative and as a concept as opposed to a specification. So. The, when, when this project comes to fruition, there will be a stack of you know, blueprints and there will be a design spec document that will be you know, a foot and a half thick. Mm. That hasn't been written. This is, this is, uh, this is a, schematic. a schematic or a concept. So well, that's why I say I think there was a great idea to keep the team together because they already have mm -hmm. miles ahead of right. starting over, all over again. Yeah. And, and that's a concept that fits for them because they're on the hook. 
Yeah. You know, if we're going to go to ballot on this, they've got to deliver. Well, they know. But they knew. But it's their they, number. They, yeah. they, they, there was no guarantee that it would go beyond that year. We only signed a contract with them for a year because mm -hmm. if they didn't work out and they weren't compatible mm -hmm. to Hampton and what we wanted, we were going to write them yeah. off and go look mm -hmm. again. But right. where we had such a good working relationship, they were delivering. They were delivering the product on time yeah. and supporting us. We stayed with them. And that's what made the, the committee so confident, because we felt we were in the hands of professionals, right. real professionals. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that added tremendously. Yep. So the last piece to this is Nathan would like to go yes. over the cost, and I think that's what everybody sort of thinks. Okay. So the back, the back page of your telephone piece there, it's all green and orange or whatever came out. Yep. How is it going to impact your tax bill? <coughs> There's lots of approaches. It's not my it's it's my intent, I guess, to give you worst case. So when I tell you what the tax rate impact could be or would be, mm -hmm. I don't assume that your tax valuations are going to grow by one percent every year, so that the mill rate will start to look lower and lower and lower. Mm -hmm. What I say is, if your property were valued in Hampton the same way for the next 25 years, here's the basic assumption that you can make. The reality is. As more industry comes to town, as they build more more beachfront property and tax it, mm -hmm. as they build more developments here or there, can't be a ton of that because we're fairly built out as a community. But as those things, I mean, we just, we brought on a significant chunk of, of property in this last cycle. I know we revalued, but we also added yeah. several million dollars um, of new properties being taxed. So when that happens, it takes some of the burden off everyone. I don't bake and I don't bake that in at all. I don't consider that in any of these projections. So this is a very rudimentary kind of worst case approach. Using today's three point three billion dollar tax base and working with right now the New Hampshire Municipal Bond Bank, which is a pseudo governmental organization in Concord that aggregates bonding needs of multiple school districts, uh, cities, towns, counties. Mm -hmm. They aggregate that and they manage their own bond rating as an entity and they sell bonds on behalf of the organized group uh, which takes a lot of the the expertise demand off the local entity we don't sell bonds they sell the bonds we just get the dollars and pay the bill right so they let the experts do although that's not our other our only option there are other options that we will explore assuming that the vote goes through to try to make sure that we get the very best rates for hampton but they were anticipating right now that a 25-year bond for a number like $25,950,000 would, would right now bring rates somewhere, cost rates of somewhere around 3.75%, and that number is growing. We were at two and a smidge here yes. a month and a half ago, two months ago, right? So that number is growing, and the markets, I think, are going to reflect some of this in the coming, in the coming months. But in the first year, we have a $570,000 interest only payment. Because we buy in a June or July bond sale, mm -hmm. that first year we only pay interest, and then we pick up our 25 years worth of principal and interest. That 570,000 of new budget impact costs roughly 17 cents per thousand on the tax rate. That's new cost. That's, so on the first $100,000 of property value you might own and be taxed on, that's 17 bucks a year. If you had a $400,000 home, that would be 68 bucks for the first year of new taxes. I, I'm not ignoring the fact that you already have a significant tax bill, regardless of your property value, <laughs> but it's a new $17 per 100,000. Yeah. The subsequent year, which wouldn't be this coming fall, it would be the fall of 18 when you get your bill, our budget would have risen by another million bucks. Million thirty-five thousand mm -hmm. to add to the five seventy that's already there to make the first full payment yeah. of principal and interest. You would already have taken the whack on the first seventeen cents. You got to pony up a new thirty-two cents, which is another thirty-two bucks a year. So in the first year, it's it's seventeen cents. Every year thereafter for twenty-five years, it's forty-nine cents. If you're with me, mm. that forty-nine cents per thousand. It's 49 bucks a year on every 100,000 of property value. So if you're sitting on a $200,000 home, it's 98 bucks. If you're on a 
five hundred thousand dollar home, it's two hundred forty five bucks. If you're on a if you if you're taxed uh, in a million dollar property, it's four hundred and ninety dollars a year. Yeah. The exercise that I tried to go through to make this to make this not man manageable to bite it down, and and I think it's important. We talked about this at the facilities advi the proper uh, project advisory committee. If you have a four hundred thousand dollar home. If you have a $400,000 home and this passes, over the course of the full 25 years, you'll pay roughly $5,000. We can have a debate if you, I don't want to have a debate. Let's not have a debate. <laughs> Some people would say that good quality schools contribute to and support property values. Isn't it reasonable to assume that your $400,000 property is going to appreciate more than five grand in 25 years, mm -hmm. especially if it's supported by good quality schools and handling. Mm -hmm. So it's, I, I, know it's, I know it's tax impact and it's significant. And every new dollar being asked for is a difficult dollar to raise for some members of the community, maybe all members of the community. But this is a pretty, you know, I try not to editorialize, but I sit as a <laughs> board member on a school board in another community where a project like this is going to cost us four bucks a thousand, not 49 cents. Uh, and I don't know that that community can afford it or will, but, uh, but relatively speaking, boy, that's a pretty decent investment to make in your schools and in your property values, I hope. So uh, that's the a tax town answer. similar to us, Auburn, um, had a building proposal last year and their cost per thousand was two dollars per thousand in their community. So when we tried to do some comparisons about what we could handle, uh, this, this, this came in really well for us. This is a side question. Uh, yes, David, please. David, David, wait a second. Steve has a hand up. Yes. I, as I mentioned before, I was fortunate enough to take the tour. Um, I went in there by myself in an afternoon after school, so we didn't disrupt as we went through the school, but I saw everything from top to bottom. Good. I think that anybody that has not taken the tour of that school should go in there. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, some of the things that you brought up tonight, um, it's interesting how my mind blocked all of that out. <laughs> and you reminded me of some of the things that's almost nightmarish. Um, taking the tour, the amazing after school, what I was absolutely amazed by, how many kids were there still. Yeah. They were, there was a, a group of students um, practicing for a play mm -hmm. in, the, um, in the new, well, what will be the auditorium. Um, the, the shark news with the green background, the green that is, they, they're amazing. And if you haven't ever watched the shark news, you've got to go online <laughs> and watch it because it's just amazing, the, the talent of those kids. But every there were so many after-school projects going on in programs, and um, but you need to take that tour. You absolutely must. I, everybody in this town should go through that building because once they do, they'll understand. You know. So thank you very much. My question was, I thought you had mentioned earlier something about the center school. And I was interpreting what you said, and I may have misinterpreted it. But Can't hear you. Due, that is due or needs to be redone in the future. What about the other schools, Marston and Center nope. School? What uh, condition are they in? Center School, we did a Center School, which is our primary grade school, preschool through grade two on Winnicott Road. Mm -hmm. We did a two classroom addition three years ago right. on the back end, uh, finishing off the 1999 edition. Um, there, we have done. Uh, roof work at center. Um, I, 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 uh, we've done some bathrooms. There are some additional bathroom renovations to be done there for uh, for uh, accessibility. Um, but you make me also think about plumbing, air quality. Right. Air quality is something that the board has has talked to us about. That we're we're doing research right now for all of the schools. More philosophical conversation. You talk about lengthening the school day, lengthening the school year, changing the school year. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why in New England we don't have school in July and August is not so much because we're so agrarian and we all need to be in the fields anymore, but because it's too bloody hot and none of these schools have any air quality yeah. addressed. And so um, 
with security measures, somebody suggested, oh, you should bu put bulletproof glass in. I raised my hand and say, if you put bulletproof, graph, bulletproof glass all through the first floor, you can't open those windows, they're too heavy. You don't have any air conditioning, you'll <laughs> suffocate inside. <laughs> you know, this is your brain on, on hot weather. I mean, it's, you couldn't yeah. do it. So there's, there are certainly some things in the other schools, depending on how they'll be used, that would want to be addressed over time. But I don't know that, any, other than the roof work that we're doing at, at Marston right now, I don't think there's anything major in the 10 to 15 year horizon. Although in, in the schools, not only is air quality an issue, uh, we've done some window replacement at Center School. We need to do windows at Marston. Mm -hmm. uh, it's tough though because you're replacing windows and talking about our factor, and you can see daylight through the bricks down below it because they're not well insulated. So insulation is going to be an issue that needs to be addressed in the near term. But I don't. Anything? Don't my husky. The boilers I, have been done in the schools. Yeah, Those three hundred thousand each year has been spent. That three hundred thousand right. dollars long-term maintenance is, has been a good a good tool and should continue to be a good tool so to overall, keep the maintenance. So I'm hearing they're in good shape. They're in pretty good shape. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Reasonably good shape. Reasonably good. Yep. But this one, I mean, we have the ninety. We just paid off the ninety-six edition at Marston ninety-six. And when you did the 96 edition, you cleaned up the, a lot of things in the other pieces of the building. We did a 99 edition in center school, and you cleaned up a lot of the other things. Mm -hmm. But the last major work done at all on the academy was 74, 73, 74. So. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Anybody else? Oh, yeah. Sonny. I'm going to abstain, but let me toss this out. If it doesn't pass this year, we will look for a regional because... Sunny, they don't want a regional school. <laughs> SAU 90, uh, 21 schools that are in an SAU 21 right. do not at this point want a regional school. You bring up an excellent point. Because if this does not pass, then in fact, we're going to have to piecemeal all of the issues. That means we're going to do the electrical, we're going to do, we're going to do it, and as you know, uh, the sum of the parts will be greater than the whole. Yes. And it'll cost us more to do the roof and the safety <coughs> and, the, and the traffic flow and the in and out of the building. All of those components will be far greater because you'll stretch them out over time. You yeah. don't have your workers on site. All of those things that make a project a little bit more efficient will not happen. But we have to do that, Sonny. You can't, this district cannot that. wait yeah. another year mm -hmm. and hopes that the community will say, well, we'll give it another shot. Yeah. But, you know. So it's just a million from last year. Yeah, it already cost you a million dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Thomas says, Thomas says, if you stop tearing a building apart, you're going to run into more problems. Well, we and did. A, you, I know you will. If you get your contractors locked in, you'll find a way to make a profit. Well, that's why we have our project advisor. And Gino Baroni mm. is like a dog on a bone. And he will, he is, he is, uh, um, I wish Keith were here. He calls Nathan and I tenacious. <laughs> this guy is unbelievable. That's not going to happen. And we committed at Center School. And we did that on purpose because we demonstrated to this community that it can be done. And, and I believe that this project will come in as it was, a guaranteed maximum, and we're going to work towards that, because there's nothing worse than not being able to deliver like that to a community. I know you're kind of like ignoring me right now, but <laughs> that is the belief that the school board has and that we have. And you are right, Sonny. A regional middle school would make the most sense, but when all parties don't want it, you can't do it. Well, well you can have to make a sale. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm That's gonna, what you're trying to do now. So. Sonny, okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to make one more quick point here. We, I was skeptical when the suggestion was made to leave SAU 21 and form our own school district for the three Hampton schools. And I said to myself, well, gee whiz, they're going to want a palace. They're going to want uh, 50 uh, machines and... Uh, and uh, computers and stuff and whatever and then it'll go up and up and the expenses will and I have to confess that while I originally thought it was not a good idea this is the smartest thing we've ever done and nothing gets by 
the business administrator who's sitting in front of me. Nothing. No, I mean that, and I'm not, I never say that unless I mean it. Nothing gets by him. And if he says it's going to be X, I take that as a taxpayer, as a resident, I take that as gospel. We are so fortunate with the team that we've got for SAU. But, but quite frankly, the board doesn't let us get away with anything either. I mean, let's call. I mean, well, they, are very, they are very, very careful about expenditures. They review a monthly statement every month and ask Nathan, well, where did it, where did this money go? Yeah. How did you do this? Where, how did that get spent? Which not much gets by me at the dinner table either. Well, once. <laughs> Now that you brought up Art Brady and Mike Edgar, yes. I have to bring up Rosemary Lemurs. Yes. Because if it wasn't for Rosemary Lemurs, SAU 90 wouldn't be as fastly put together, as well put together. Right. She had us doing our homework about yeah. everything before we did it. You're so right. a lot of congratulations goes to Rosemary Lemurs because You're she right. really led the charge and really took charge of that board for that year and really was yep. well done. But all the talented people that have come together, and this school district is a tremendous credit to this town. So, now, do you have any more, sir? Because we'll listen to you forever. We have been, we have kept you so long. I appreciate you. We're going to vote now. Yeah. Well, yes. Uh, <laughs> on the bond proposal for the SA United School District to renovate the Hampton Academy. Um, Barbara, the figure again? $25,950,000. $25,950,000. In favor of recommending by the Budget Committee to the taxpayers. In favor? Okay. We have... Uh, oh, thank you, David. Okay, so we have uh, Ms. Ms. Barnes abstaining? Yes. No. And what are you doing, Michael? No. And what are I'll you doing, Sonny? Also. And Sonny is abstaining, and Mr. Pierce is saying no. Okay. 